Hi guys and welcome to today's video. So today's video is going to be new perfumes closing out 2023 and welcoming 2024. So we have some fragrances that have come out now in December, some coming out at the tail end of December, and then fragrances that are said to be released in January and February. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. So I'm just gonna scooch on over so that I can post up photos here. This video is definitely more relaxed, chatty. I am looking up fragrances on iFragrance, Trend Mood, and Whiff, Whiff of a Fragrance. I believe the first three I'm going to talk about is actually out already. These are fragrances I don't plan on picking up, but I wanted to talk about them because it's a popular line. And this is from Marc Jacobs. This is the new Daisy fragrances. So we have Daisy Also oh Fresh Pop, Daisy Pop, and Daisy Love Pop. So Daisy Pop, this one has notes of grapefruit, yuzu, violet leaf, heart of jasmine, kumquat, violet, and base notes of musk, pample wood, and vanilla. And then Also oh Fresh Pop, we have lemon, pear and lime, heart notes of rose, raspberry, and violet, and base notes of musk, crystal moss, and cedar. And then last we have Daisy Love Pop. This one has cloudberry, bergamot, green pistachio, chantilly cream, and base notes of benzoin, and sorbetolide. Not sure what that is, but I would say out of the three, this one sounds like it's supposed to be the most maybe fruity gourmand out of the uh, out of the fragrances. Kind of with that Chantilly cream and the, the pistachio. And then the other two fragrances, Daisy Pop and Daisy Oh So Fresh, are going to be more of your, I don't want to say fruity florals, but maybe like slightly fruity fresh because they're not overly fruity. Oh Fresh has lemon and pear lime, and then Daisy Pop has grapefruit and yuzu, which grapefruit and yuzu tend to be a little bit more sharp and citrusy. So I think those are gonna be more of the fresh ones and then you got more of the fruity, slightly gourmand coming from Daisy Love Pop. So if you're a fan of the Daisy line, I think these would be um, nice additions. They're more of your mass appealing, more of your easy grab kind of fragrances. Not anything I'm gonna be picking up, but if I saw it in store, I, I would sniff them. All right, the next we have from the Armani Privé line. Definitely two I would test out. So this is their Blanc and their Noir. I cannot pronounce the name, so I'm just gonna pop it in here, but the Blanc is kind of in this beigey white color with gold, and then the Noir is in this black with gold color. So for the Blanc, we have Haitian vetiver, tobacco, saffron, alimi or elami, and leather. Now, I'm actually reading these, because some of these I already researched. I'm actually reading this for the first time, and this isn't going to be my kind of scent. And neither is the <laughs> neither is the Noor. So the Noor has vetiver, tobacco. Again, that, I don't know if it's elami or elami. Notes, saffron, and leather. So I don't know, these are, I think, unisex. To me, they might lean more masculine to my nose and what I consider to be more, ma again, you guys can wear whatever you want, but what I'm used to smelling on a man. These aren't my kind of notes, so not anything I will be on the search for. There are probably other fragrances I would wanna test out. I might test them out on paper, but I wouldn't risk testing them out on my skin. All right, then next we have Tom Ford Vanilla Sex. This is definitely one that I wanna test out. I'm hoping for a spicy vanilla. I really love Tom Ford's Pour Femme, but the notes that are listed aren't giving me, you know, warm spicy. It's giving me more sweet, but it's still one I want to test out. The notes on this one are Vanilla Tincture, Vanilla Absolute, Tonka Absolute, Floral Notes, Bitter Almond, Sandalwood, and Ultra Vanille. Next, we have Fleur Mood Ring. This is one that I'm probably going to be picking up a travel of because, I don't know, the notes just sound good even though the reviews on this one already, they're not they're not the best. I wanna say a lot of the reviews are on performance, but again, guys, when it's clean beauty, that is to be expected. Performance isn't the best because the harsh chemicals that are in fragrances are removed. So it's one of those things, what do you want? <laughs> do you want? a clean fragrance or do you want the toxic? I have both, but because I know that about the fragrance, I know what to expect. So this might not have the best performance, but it's still one I want to try out just because the notes sound kind of delicious. Okay, so the notes on this are Pattaya Pulp, Sweet Orange, 
fruit gummies, heart notes of orange flower, jasmine sambac, marigold bloom, and base notes of patchouli prisma, glaze musk, and sheer amber. So this is one I definitely want to get a travel of. I tried to get a travel. It's already sold out, both the large bottle and the travel of this one, but I do plan on picking up this fragrance and I'll let you guys know my thoughts once I do. Okay, then next we have Nicki Minaj Pink Friday 2. I've never really gotten into any of the Nicki Minaj fragrances because of the bottles. I do like my crazy bottles, but I actually never cared for those bottles. But it is something that if I did see it like at Ulta or at stores, I would I would sniff. So this is supposed to have top notes of nectarine, pineapple, solar blooms, middle notes of orange flower petals, pink mimosa, and damask rose, and base notes of amber, tonka bean, and sexy musk. Sounds like another pretty kind of ambery, fruity floral fragrance. So I think it's gonna be likable. And if you enjoy the Nicki Minaj fragrances, it might be something you wanna pick up. Again, it's not something I'll pick up. I love Nicki Minaj, I love her music. Just those bottles, they don't do it for me, so. Okay, then next we have Clean Reserves H2O Collection. I already have their five mil set coming. I saw this teeth somewhere then someone in my fragrance group said it's live so i went straight to the sephora site to see if i could find like a sample set and they do have one so i did go ahead and pick that up and i will review this line in more detail but this set comes with six fragrances we have waterfall which has keynotes of aquatic accord apple blossom vetiver and then we have Golden Citrus. This has keynotes of Mandarin, Orange Blossom, and Musk. We have Water Lotus with keynotes of Water Lily, Muguet, and Musk. Nectarine Petal with keynotes of Nectarine, Peach Blossom, and Musk. And then Musk Noir with Mandarin, Orange Blossom, and Musk. And Brilliant Peony with Peony, Magnolia, and Musk. Now, I have a pretty in-depth review of Clean Reserve, like the Clean Reserve line and the Advent Garden collection, which I will link that video below. The Clean line is another clean beauty line. I do think that their fragrances last pretty well, but they're definitely more intimate, your skin but better kind of fragrances. They elevate the way you smell. They're more musky, they're fresh but very soft. They're going to be fragrances that you're gonna smell clean and when someone hugs you, they're gonna smell you, but you're not gonna smell overly perfumey. There are some exceptions in their collections. There's some perfumes that are a little bit louder. Not too loud, but like one of my favorite is White Fig and Bourbon. It's a very kind of fruity, intoxicating fragrance, but it's still on the softer side. So the clean line is one that I enjoy because I do enjoy more in your bubble intimate fragrances on a daily wear. So I'm really excited to try this one, but they're all musky fragrances. So to me, you have to kind of be into these kind of fragrances. They're all gonna smell slightly similar, kind of like the Advent Garden Collection. The Advent Garden Collection had a lot of, like to me, the Advent Garden Collection was a very earthy kind of petrichor, very fresh air kind of collection. This one's gonna be, to me, musky and aquatic. So Advent Garden, musky and earthy, and then the H2O, like the name would imply, is gonna be more musky and aquatic and fresh. I'm really excited about this line because I do enjoy the Clean Reserve line. So once that comes in and I test them out, I will have a video for you. Okay, then next we have a new one by Mason Margiela. This is Replicas from the Garden. The bottle, the color kind of pulled me in and then the notes kind of made me step back. So the notes on this one are Tomato Leaf Accord, Green Mandarin Essence, and Patchouli Heart. And while those are only three notes and two out of the three I enjoy, that tomato leaf is kind of bothering me. So it's one that I would I would test out in Sephora, but I don't know that I would even get a travel of because I don't know what that tomato leaf is going to smell like. And I had gotten on a date by Replica and I did not like that one at all. So travels still cost money. So I really try to get travels that are either marked down considerably or I know I'm gonna enjoy the fragrance. So this is one that I would test in store, but not anything I will be picking up a travel of. All right, then next we have Sherosa 59. I'm definitely gonna be getting this one. I saw that this one was going to be released in December, but now I'm seeing that it's launching in 2024. So. I'm not sure when that one's coming out. So this one's gonna have the mist as well as a lotion. Now, I have purchased 
all of the lotions and the only lotion I like is Boom Boom Cream. I'm noticing that when it comes to fragrance lotions, I either like Bath and Body Works, like the fruity kind of lotions, coconut lotions. But for Sol de Janeiro, none of the lotions have worked out for me yet, except for the Boom Boom Cream. They just have something, I don't know, there's just something in certain lotions that turn my stomach, even though I enjoy the fragrance, like the mist or the fragrance itself. Those fragrances don't make me nauseous, but for whatever reason, certain creams do. So I, I wouldn't pick up the, the body cream, but I would definitely pick up the body splash. So Sherosa 59 has notes of vanilla orchid, sugared violet, and sheer sandalwood. So definitely one I'm going to be picking up. Then next we have Ness Lychee Rose. So this fragrance I did pick up a travel of. I might go ahead and do a video where I talk about this one and the new K. Ali Lychee. This one I just got later and everyone has already reviewed it. I did talk about this one in a, in a haul video, but I think I might review both of them since they're both lychee fragrances and I do have a travel of this one coming in. This one has notes of Rose Absolute, Lychee, and Effervescent Pink Champagne. So I'm wondering how these two will compare. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about two more fragrances that I'm super excited about. So first up we have Black Opium Eau de Parfum over Red. And I actually saw this one in a fragrance group first and then I went ahead and tried to look it up and I couldn't find it and then Trend Mood posted it a day or two after the, the last one I'm gonna close out with. So this one, I don't know if this one's coming out. It looks like it might come out in January and it's one that I'm definitely gonna be on the hunt for a 30 ml of, but this has top notes of cherry, green mandarin, heart notes of Moroccan jasmine, orange blossom absolute and black tea and base notes of coffee, Indonesian patchouli heart and Madagascar vanilla. So I love cherry fragrances, but Cherry fragrances do tend to kind of fall in just a couple of different categories. You got your kind of warm, spicy cherry fragrances, kind of like your K. Ali Love Fest Burning Cherry, your Tom Ford Lost Cherry, even the new Seven Virtues Cherry Ambition. They all have that kind of saffron, sweet kind of scent to them with slight differences. But if you have one, you might have them all because how many different variations do you need? I have Love Fest Burning Cherry, that's all I need. And then I have my Very Good Girl Glam, that's a little bit more of a sour cherry, a little bit more fruity. And then I have my Boozy Cherry, which is my Victor and Rolf Dancing Roses. So I'm kind of excited if this is going to be more of a coffee cherry, because I don't have anything coffee cherry, so definitely intrigued by this one. Okay, so last, I was, in my opinion, saving the best for last. And that's only because I adore this line. There are lines where I tend to be a collector of, like the Giorgio Armani C. I don't have all of them, but I have six or seven. La Via Belle, YSL Libre. I think I have every flanker of YSL Libre and Valentino. So Valentino is coming out with a new Born in Roma, and this one is Green Stravaganza. So this one doesn't really have notes listed, it just kind of describes the fragrance. So this is a floral amber fragrance with woody notes, kind of like how they describe all their other ones. And this one opens the door to an extravagant world created by Lapsang Sushuang Accord and Radiant Jasmine Absolute with a seductive touch of a vanilla extract. So it looks like there's lavender and star anise in the men's version and also lime. I see coffee in the background and then the women's version, I'm seeing vanilla, jasmine, and another kind of floral. I might pick up the men's version for Dennis just because I do enjoy the men's Valentinos. I feel like I wanna get him the entire line, but I am very excited about this flanker. It's probably the one that I'm most excited to try out of all the ones that I have talked about today. So that is the new releases coming out now and in the new year. Let me know in the comments below, are you guys planning on picking up any of these fragrances? Are there any fragrances you're excited to try? But that will do it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye guys.